Thank you, honey, for sponsoring this video. Here we have the star of the show. I have never seen this, I've never heard of it, and most importantly, I've never tasted it. As you can clearly see, it is a Wagyu piece of steak. And the marbling of it, even though it's inside of the cryovac, is incredible. So the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and open it. As always, if you are a meat lover like me, it is the most exciting part. And once I opened it up and set it on my cooling board, take a look at this steak. That, my friends, is the new steak I just discovered. Even though it has a name, I've never heard of it. It's called lifter meat. And if you are like me and never heard of it, let me explain a little bit better. This is a regular ribeye. Right here on top of it, we have the ribeye cap. And on top of the ribeye cap, we have the lifter meat. That is what this is. Usually, it is almost impossible to find on a butcher shop. However, if you have the hookups with your meat dealer, he might just get you some. And this is the first time I'm going to be trying this out. And since I have two of them, the next thing to do is to go ahead and prepare it. As I can clearly see, we do have a little bit of external fat and silver skin. But at the same time, you can appreciate the marbling of this cut. Oh man, this is going to be good. So I went ahead and started cleaning it all up. The only thing that was important to me was not to remove too much. However, at the same time, it did have a good amount of intramuscular fat. So I chose to remove all of the external one. And once I was done with the trimming, this is what it looks like. Again, marbling like this is just awesome. And it should always be exactly what you're looking for. Now, since I have two of them and I've never tried this meat before, I want to do an experiment. But before doing so, we have to start off with the master of all seasoning. And I'm talking about salt. And if you know me already, I'm a huge fan of dry brining. That is just a fancy word to say put salt on it and let it rest in your refrigerator overnight. One of the important things you gotta keep in mind whenever you're dry brining is to make sure you put enough salt. And obviously ensure that every single edge is perfectly coated. I like to put it on a cooling rack to make sure that I don't waste any of the salt. Once that was done, the only thing left to do was to let it rest in my refrigerator overnight. That was perfect because it allowed me to go ahead and make an incredible side dish. And take a look at this one. Oh, come on. This is delicious. And you're going to be amazed how easy it is to make it. The first thing we start off is potatoes. The only thing you got to keep in mind is to make sure they're all the same size. To cook them, we have two options. You can either boil them or to make it even easier for you, I'm going to show you how to do them in the microwave. For this amount of potatoes, I threw in two tablespoons of water, threw them in the microwave for eight minutes and let them cook. Once the time was up, you can see that they are nice and soft. I like to cook them in the microwave because that does not dilute any of the flavor. Whenever you boil them, trust me, you do lose a little bit of that flavor. Now, if you have a potato ricer like this, I highly recommend using it. This ensures that we will have no lumps. And as you can see, it is super easy to use. The next thing to do is to add a good amount of salt followed by cornstarch. And as always, remember exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below for you. Now the important thing to do is to mix it well and let this dough cool down. As you can see, using a potato ricer will ensure that we have zero lumps. For the cheese part, you can use anything you like. Just cut them up to size, using a little bit of the dough, throw the cheese in there, form a bow and that's it. That is as easy as it gets. And if you have kids, this is the perfect thing to do with them. It is not only fun, they will enjoy eating it. As you can see, once I was done, I have my balls ready to go. To give a nice external crunch, I like to go ahead and add breadcrumbs. For that, I first rolled them in flour, followed by egg wash, and finished it off with panko breadcrumbs. These are super easy to make and it will go perfect with any steak. The only thing left to do now is to fry them. For that, I like to set my oil at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that temperature is reached, the only thing left to do is to throw them in there. You want to fry them up nice and slow. The only thing I like to recommend is not to move them around in the first minute. This will ensure that the breadcrumbs will stick. But once that one minute is up, feel free to move them around and make sure that every single edge is golden brown. Because by that time, the only thing to do is to remove them from the oil and strain it. And this is what they look like when you're done. Definitely let them cool down before you take a first bite. You don't want to get burned. But after about five minutes, I open one up and oh man, take a look at this. Cheese, potato and breadcrumbs. That is amazing. And it should be a perfect side dish for our steak. Talking about that, by this time, my steak were fully dry brine. That red color is a sign that the salt penetrated nicely and deeply into the meat. Since this is the first time I'm trying this meat, I want to know which way is better, to keep it simple or to add more seasoning. So I started seasoning both of them with freshly ground black pepper. One of them, I'm going to keep it just like that. The other one, I threw in garlic powder, followed by onion powder and smoked paprika. This way, it's going to let me know to find out which one is best so that I can let you guys know. As always, I made sure 
sure to season both sides, including the edges. The last thing we want is unseasoned meat, especially when we're trying out a brand new steak. But now that everything is perfectly seasoned, now it's time to cook them. The first thing I'll be doing is putting a nice beautiful sear and basting them with butter. Once that's done, I'll be cooking them in indirect heat until I reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit and for that, I'll be using my wireless thermometers. So now I say, it is enough talking and it is time to find out how these new steaks are gonna taste. So let's do it! Before moving forward, I want to thank today's sponsor, Honey. These days, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping I really do. I mean, seriously, including groceries, clothing, and pretty much everything. And that is where Honey comes in. It's a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them whenever you're checking out. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupon. Wait a few seconds and Honey searches for coupons for that site. If Honey finds a working code, your price will drop. Now that is cool. The awesome thing is that Honey has found its over 17 million members over $2 billion in savings. And Honey supports all kind of retailers from food delivery to tech and gaming to clothes branding and many more. It's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. Remember, it's free and it works with whatever browser you have. Get Honey for free today by going to joinhoney.com slash Guga. That's joinhoney.com slash Guga so they know I sent you. Once again, thank you, Honey, for sponsoring this video. All right, everybody, here we have our beautiful steaks today, my mouth, perfectly medium rare with some Brazil. I don't know if this is would be a Brazilian stuff or Cuban stuff or Latin stuff. I have no idea. What is that? Yeah? It's that's looking very interesting. I, you excited for that one? <laughs> it looks like coxinha, but I'm guessing it's not coxinha because you didn't do the little dip. No, on the it's potatoes, and then inside there's a surprise for you, lactose intolerant friend. Yeah. Oh great. <laughs> so here's the deal with this steak. It is a brand new steak. I just discovered it. I don't know if it's gonna be good or bad, but apparently you're going directly for the side dish. <laughs> Come on. All right, go ahead and try you the side dish. cheese, I have to try it. Uh, oh, you see, he is lactose intolerant, everybody, and Ooh. he still loves cheese. Huh? Oh, you cutting the cheese? That, yeah. You know, this is almost kind of like finger food. We'll try this first then, right. to get your, you know, appetite open. Huh? I, I am salivating. I am salivating here. <laughs> ah. Cheers, everybody. Wow, and the potato is really good. I know, right? It's just mashed potatoes. It not, is mashed it's not potato. Other potato though. I mean, you can't go wrong with this. Mm, huh? So good. <laughs> this is addicting. Oh my God, you're opening a whole realm of possibilities here now. I know, right? This is a very addicting, everybody. Be careful. You can stuff it with other things. You can put either ground beef or a little bit of ham. Or, I mean, the possibilities mm. are endless, just like Mama said. Cheese and guayabada. Che oh, guayabada is guava paste. Guava paste. Sorry, guys. That would be absolutely insane in here. This mm. is phenomenal. I recommend it. You recommend I it? I recommend it. All right, so here's the deal. These are the same exact steak, and we're gonna basically be judging between this one and this one. They should taste a little bit different, but at the same time, the most important thing, which one is gonna be better? I'll tell you one thing here, everybody. As soon as I was slicing up the steak, it feels so tough. Really? It feels tough. It feels extremely tough. You guys saw the marbling score. By the way, this is a Wagyu, my mouth. <laughs> so, but it feels tough. It doesn't feel and tough now. My brother Emilio, aka my meat dealer, said you definitely want to cut this one against the grain. If not, it's not going to be as good as you might want it to be. But I'm excited to find out the taste. You ready for this? Let's do this. All right. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. 
Wow. That is tender. That is super tender. Wow, that is extremely tender. Super tender, super flavorful. Ooh, but, but that that's just crazy because when I was cutting, it didn't feel really tender. Tough. No, 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 no. When you're chewing, it's really, really tender. Super tender. Wow. Almost feels like a Wagyu ribeye is extremely tender. But I promise you, everybody, when I was slicing it, it felt like a shoe leather. <laughs> it did. But it's so tender and it has a very nice flavor. Very nice flavor. It has a little bit of a tug. Yeah, it does. It has. But it's still soft and it's still super, super tasty. Wow. Super tasty, super tender. Very unique. I just discovered a new steak basically because I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. You cannot buy this one here on the supermarket. It is not very popular steak, but it is a very, very nice and different steak. If you're thinking it's like a flank steak, it's not. No, I, I thought it looked like a flank steak. Yeah. But it does not taste like a flank steak. It doesn't feel like a flank steak. And um, wow, it pays to have a butcher friend. I know, right? <laughs> so now here's the deal. This one here is just traditional salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Beautiful. This one here, I want to try it with something else. So there's additional spices. Okay. So for us to find out if it's worth putting extra spices on this since it's a brand new steak i've never had it before you ready for it mama let's go all right let's try this one with all the seasonings cheers everybody it's so tender it's crazy it has a lot more flavor than you more different flavors yeah tell me mama which one do you prefer more the one that has a lot of spices and all the seasoning or just the salt and pepper that's it I I, there's not even garlic powder there i made a mistake previously oh. <laughs> it's just salt and pepper nothing else I'm a simple guy that with salt and pepper is plenty for me. Salt and pepper. I have to agree with my mom. For me, I like to keep it simple. If I'm going to eat a steak, I want to eat the steak just with salt and pepper. I want to taste the steak, not a bunch of seasoning. Not to say that this is bad. Sometimes I like to change it up. But at the same time, if you ask me which one do I prefer, definitely just keep it simple. Anyway, guys, these are the results. It is very, very interesting to try a steak that you've never tried before. It has a different texture on your mouth. It is a little bit, it has a bite to it. I don't want to say that it's chewy. It's not chewy. It's extremely tender, but it has a little bite to it. But it also, Mama is dying for the potato thing. <laughs> mm. Potato with a steak. Oh, that's, I've been doing that. I've oh, been no, doing that. I you just dried, did it right now. I just did it right now. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, eat these little balls together with the steak. Oh You'll make it amazing. But as I was saying, it is a unique steak you've never had it, I definitely recommend you giving it a try. It's something unique mm. and definitely do with the balls. Come on, you're having a good time over here, mm. huh, <laughs> We're coming back to this one here, yeah. though. I see you're going back to that one. This one is phenomenal. Anyway, guys, these are the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.